Toe rats. Good morning guys, I have the opportunity for the next couple days to work on installing the uh, Behringer Master Cylinders in the Kit Box 5. Uh, it's down for maintenance right now, we got, we're got waiting on some spark plugs for, uh, nice fresh spark plugs for Reno for the air races. Um, so they should be in today or tomorrow, so while it's down I'm going to go ahead and dive into doing this install. So I have to make up all the brake lines um, for the banjo fittings. So I'll be using the, the stainless steel. So I'll be uh, installing those, bleeding the system, and once the spark bugs come in, we'll do that stop test again and see if we get even a better improvement over the Grove Masters with these brakes. All right guys, so out of ease of installation, what I'm doing on this um, Model 5 versus what I will do on the Model 7 is I'm gonna use the existing brake reservoir, which is located right here. There's a T-fitting out the bottom, and I just found an AN T-fitting um, that I can put in there to replace this. these style connectors that are in here won't work. So I got an AN fitting to go in there. I'll use the existing reservoir instead of the Behringer reservoirs. And that's only because installing these <clears throat> would require a lot more time, but I'm gonna put these definitely in the Model 7, and let me show you what I had in mind for doing that. So. You guys know that you have the adjustable brake lever and then just in front of the brake lever on this deck right here we'll mount these and the mount will be right at the bottom of the red portion of this reservoir and the fitting will then come up through the through the uh, the, the console and that will mount there and then when you want to service them you just raise the tail and by raising the tail, it'll get this level, take the cap off, service the mass, the uh, reservoir, put the cap back on, put the tail down. Um, but that being said, if the single reservoir system works, it may be lighter and it already is a predetermined um, mounting location on the Kit Fox. You, well, you can put it anywhere you want, but this particular location works really well for me. So if the single reservoir works, and I know that they've done that in other applications like on a Vans RV uh, series, they use a remote reservoir like this. So we're gonna see how that works out with the, with the Behringer Master Cylinders, get the Grove ones out of there, and then we'll do another brake test and see how, uh, how it compares to the two that I've already done. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I don't know how much step-by-step -step I'll be able to cover with the camera because it is all very buried in there. But basically, real quick, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna disconnect the masters and the fittings, take the whole system out, put the new masters, all right, we're busy at the hel helicopters here today, put the new master cylinders in and create new brake lines that connect them all and then a brake line up to the master or up to the reservoir um, so it's not much to it it's just the plumbing so there probably won't be a whole lot of I can do video wise with that but just wanted to show that's how I'm doing it and then I'll, I'll try to get some footage of of the final system when it's done um, so the very first thing I need to do is drain out all the brake fluid so I'm gonna do that first and then take the existing system apart which makes me nervous because I got some flying I need to do coming up here pretty soon and I'm gonna take everything apart. So I'm still waiting on some new spark plugs, so now's a good time to do it. All right, so the first master cylinder is going in. Okay, first turtle. I have to go home and get a uh, pair of pliers or uh, cable cutters that I didn't bring. There's always something at the other location that you need. So I can't cut the cable without those. So I'm dead in the water until I get that. So it's gonna take me a half hour to do that. I'll be back. All right, magic of camera. Went home, got the part, had some lunch, back at it. Okay, 
so what I'm doing is taking the old AN fitting that was on there, on that brake line, off. And I'll be installing the banjo fitting. All right guys, so I'm gonna show you how these uh, banjo fittings are put on the brake lines. So this is what you're gonna start with. You're gonna take the back off and you've got this little sleeve, okay? So you can cut your brake line. Then you're gonna wanna straighten it out the best you can. Take the, the coupler, make sure the threaded side's facing out. You're gonna slide that over the th braided part. Okay, now you wanna take a knife and peel back the braiding. You wanna do it down the hose, the width of this. Okay, so yeah, it's all flowered out around that inner uh, plastic hose. Then you're gonna just slide that with the bevel facing inward and the flat part facing out. Push it on there. And what I like to do is then push down on the countertop and get it nice and flush all the way in there so that the hose is all the way up against the collar. All right. Then you take your banjo fitting and just slide it in there, like that. You pull your collar up and then stick it in there. And then what I've been doing is taking something like a screwdriver or something round through this, put this in the vise, and then you're just gonna cinch that down until you get it as tight as you can. And in the orientation, because this hose kind of has a pre-bend in it, you can't really flex it much. So you want that fitting lined up the best you can so that, you know, that's something you're gonna have to mess around with. You can make little adjustments, try to always tighten it to make the adjustment. Anyway, that's how you put a banjo fitting on the stainless brake line. All right guys, so I've got everything plumbed. The only one I'm gonna change is, is this one here because there's too much hose left in it. Um, the outboard right master cylinder on the co-pilot side had to be turned 90 degrees so that the fittings faced inward in order to best make that work. The rest of them are facing um, towards the engine. And I don't know if you can see in there real good. So the bottom one on this master goes to the brake, top one goes over to the other master cylinder, and then same thing on, on the left side. The bottom one goes to the brake, top one goes over to the other side. So let's go over to the other side and take a look. Okay, so you can see the crossover, and then the crossovers connect to the bottom from the co-pilot side, and then the top one is going up to the reservoir. And so um, I've got them crisscrossed on that, which shouldn't matter, but the right side brake line comes up here, goes up to the T in the reservoir. That's the wrong T, I still have to change that out with the proper one. That's just to mock it up. And then you can see the brake line coming out of the other side of the T, comes down and then wraps around to this master cylinder. So, both brakes are in the full uh, forward position uh, for the adjustability. Uh, you can't see in there, here we go. So if I push this forward and this forward, it puts the brakes back in the position I use them in. And there you have it, it's all plumb. So you can see this one's got too much slack in it. So I'm gonna cut that one means I have to waste a fitting, but I got a couple extra. But I'll make that one the proper length. Uh, I'll do that real quick, and then I'm going to call it a day. Come back, and then I have to put the cotter pins in all of the master cylinder attachment points. All the bolts have uh, our castle nuts need cotter pins. And then, then I'll go ahead and bleed the uh, felt full brake fluid and bleed it. And we should be good to go. Yeah, I'm liking it. I'm super, super happy with uh, the system. It's very easy to install. Uh, I'll show the video clip on how to make those, those uh, brake lines. They're really easy. 
Um, so excited to test them, make sure that nothing leaks tomorrow. And just from pushing on them, they're really firm. Um, bleeding the brakes was a breeze compared to the Grove system where you just, for some reason, the Groves just trap air in there and it was really hard to get all the air out. Um, these, of course, you can't see if there's air in there, but by bleeding it, you can watch those bubbles come out. And I got to where there was just nothing coming out and went through almost a half a pint of just solid fluid. So real happy with the system. Can't wait to try it out. So stay tuned for the uh, test number three on the complete Behringer system on the Kit Fox 5. All right, guys, it's brake test day number three. We'll be testing the entire Behringer brake system this time from master cylinders all the way down through the wheels and brakes. Um, to explain this brake test a little better than in the last video, what I'm doing is I'm taking the aircraft and going full throttle up to 45 miles per hour. That's usually my flying speed. I'm going to bring the power back and holding 45 miles per hour until I cross a certain point on the runway. Then I'm chopping the throttle and going full brakes. And that from the chop the throttle full brakes distance is the distance I'm measuring um, in reference to the other setups. So it was a big difference between just the Grove system to going with the Grove Masters but the Behringer brakes. I think, uh, again, it was over 80 feet shorter. So I'm real curious to see what we're going to get today. So uh, let's push it out, fire it up, and we'll get going. All right, so we are taxiing out for brake test number three. This is the all Behringer system. I'd say it was a pretty fun install, picking up all the nice stainless uh, braided uh, brake lines. And it's not a very complicated switchover. I think the most difficult thing was getting the old masters out, taking the cotter pins out of the uh, the castle nuts was a little tough to get to some of those spots. It would be a lot easier to do while you're building a plane without the uh, firewall forward on there. So I'm going to keep that in mind on my new build on the 7. I'm going to go ahead and uh, install the brake lines and everything before I close all that in. I'm going to do a little uh, check just to make sure they work. Yes, they do. So this will serve not only as the stop test, the pads are already broke in from running them with the Grove Masters, but this will also serve as a leak check for the system. So I have all the cowlings off still so that... Benton traffic check, E5329, we're going to be taking off runway 33 to stay in the powder in Benton. Have all the cowlings off so I can look at all the fittings everywhere and make sure that they uh, aren't leaking. All right, taxi test number, or uh, brake test number three. where I stopped this time on the test number three. That blue taxi light just up between uh, the military trucks is where I stopped with the Grove setup. So it is shorter, so the full system does perform better than just the Grove. Okay, super excited with how the Behringer brake system turned out. Um, we're all done with the install on the Model 5. Um, so from the first video, we ran two different brake tests, one with a Grove brake system, one with just upgrading the wheels and brakes on the uh, from the axles. Um, and then this last one was the complete Behringer system um, on the Model 5. And that's kind of the stripped down version. I didn't use the brake re regulator and I don't have a parking brake in there. But again, those two things, um, aren't necessary they're kind of upgrades the brake regulator allows you to turn down the pressure and it also has an anti-skid feature so if you're going to be switching from tundra tires back to smaller tires 
I think the brake regulator is a really good idea so you can dial back your braking pressure when running smaller tires. So overall the full system had the best performance but the half system, what I'm calling the half system, of just the wheels, brakes, um, and the new, new axle sleeves had a really impressive performance increase over the just the Grove system. So uh, if you guys are interested in doing this to your Kit Fox, you know, whether you want a full system or the half system, um, send me an email at bowenarrow at yahoo.com. I'll get you a quote as fast as I can and we'll get you set up with, with uh, tech support on how to install these brakes. I'm always available on the phone to help you guys through that. If you're local, I can even come and give you a hand. So um, go ahead and send me an email. And if you like the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Share it with a friend. Thanks. Take 31. Yeah, 31 takes. All right, guys. There's a fly that is driving me nuts. I'm having to do take after take because of this freaking fly. The Grove calipers. So from just the wheels you guys, I'm super excited how that came out. The uh, Behringer brake system. Just give me a, a... And we can get you... Um, we did the test with just the Grove uh, Masters and the Behringer... Okay, two. All right, guys, I'm super excited with how the Behringer brake system turned out. Um, I just can't put it together. Too much, too much time would be put into that before. Um, oh my God, the improvements and braking went up. Even, oh, it's horrible.